So let's say, uh, I don't know, we were given uh, this equilibrium system again, hydrogen plus iodine, uh, making two moles of hi. <laughs> and no, I haven't got old for that. I still think that's funny. All right, so let's say at equilibrium, we have these concentrations. So let's calculate our equilibrium constant. First things first, we gotta write our expression. That's gonna be different for every single equilibrium system. So let's write it out first. It's gonna be concentration of products, HI squared all over hydrogen times iodine. Now, here's where it's important. They're not always going to be this easy. This is the easiest one. We're good. I mean, not the other ones are that hard, but this one has all of the concentrations at equilibrium. So that's what we're trying to say here. So all we need to do is plug those values in there. Okay. So what's our concentration of HI? 0 0.78. 0 0.78 molar squared, all over concentration of hydrogen, 0.11, iodine also, Like the recent peanut butter cups. Kit Kat and okay. Have you had white chocolate? I have not. I'm not. I'm actually not a fan of white chocolate usually. So I don't know. I try it. I mean, I'm not gonna say no. But I don't know if I like it. Have you had the Reese's peanut butter cups with Reese's pieces inside of them yet? Oh my goodness. Like that that person whoever thought that was on fire that day. Like, boom! Like, it just hit him. Like, what if we put Reese's pieces inside of the peanut butter cups? He got promoted that day. That's what I heard. He got promoted. He's running the company, the Reese's pieces peanut butter cups company. How do you feel about the dark chocolate one? Uh, I'm okay with dark chocolate. I mean, of course, milk chocolate is going to be a little bit higher on the list than dark chocolate. But then, of course, you can always say like, with dark chocolate, like, oh, it's healthy, so I can eat more. So you know, think about that. Just think about my ticker. Dark chocolates, better. How's white chocolate on that? Is, it, is, that, can, is there any benefits to white chocolate? Is, come on, if, you, if I got some pros, to outweigh the cons. And white chocolate's not really chocolate, so it's not really protein. Um, not enough protein, so eh. more sugar. I wasn't a fan anyways. <laughs> All right, so what did we get? 50.280? Yes. 50.3. So we'll probably just say 5 0 yes. with uh, two sig figs. So that's a little tough, but we'll just say it that way. 50? Everybody like that? Yes, no, maybe so. I'm getting a lot of looks. Mm, I don't know if it's about my stance on white chocolate. <laughs> Points. Did you remember to square? Yeah. I think, I don't know, for some reason, I think I'm 50. It's 50. Ooh, that's, that's a very confident call for the 50. <laughs> 0.78 squared divided by 0.11 divided by 0.11. I got 50.28099174. So you might have to put parentheses 
I didn't, but I divide. I do it. I do it, and nobody wants to do it my way, so I won't talk about the way I do it. Okay. Well, if we do the proper way with parentheses on a board the way you have it, it's zero point six. If we put nothing, then it's fifty. No, I use. I put nothing. I got. So the way you do it. So here's. Uh, so you take point seven eight squared, divided by point one one, divided by point one one. So you don't put no parentheses at all. If you take point seven eight squared divided by point one one times point one one, that's when you have to do the parentheses. Well, you can do it in a couple steps if you want to. But, yeah, I like 50. You know why else I like 50? Because we could just click to the next slide and see 50. Okay? So, what we did, what we do? We did this one, right? 0.178 squared divided by 0.11. 50. Okay? Say I cheated. I read ahead. Okay? All right, but anyways, before we get there, what are our units? Molarity. Inverse moles. There are no units. Okay. So if you look at this, molarity squared. So one cancels out. The other cancels out. Now, I will warn you, this isn't going to work out perfectly because you might have a cubed on top, a square on bottom, and it might work out a little funny, but K is always unitless. So there are no units on the equilibrium constant because at the heart of it, it is a ratio. It's a ratio of concentrations of the products over the reactants. And so they you know, cancel each other out. So we don't have to worry about units. <coughs> All right. So we got 50, and that's how you would calculate it. All right, so make sure you, whatever way you calculate it, you know you're going to get 50. Um, so it turns out that will always be the equilibrium constant at that temperature. Okay, they're temperature dependent, but they're not concentration dependent. And that's what this table is really trying to tell you. No matter what you do, you can start out with some hydrogen and iodine, your initial concentration. Start out with some products, start out with all three. Start out with different concentrations of your reactants. They will always, when they come to equilibrium, when the rate of the reverse reaction equals the rate of the forward, they will always come to this ratio of 50. Okay? So the rate constant or the equilibrium constant is really a constant at that given temperature, temperature dependent, but you always get that value. And so what that's going to enable us to do is since it's a constant, we can use it to determine the equilibrium concentrations of the system at any point in time, no matter what we started with. Okay, doesn't that sound like fun? Determining equilibrium concentrations using the equilibrium constants? It's a blast. I can see it in your faces. You're all so excited. <laughs>